This is Algebra Concept Exam, Concepts 9 through 13 review. We're going to go ahead and solve these problems. Uh, if you get this online, you can go ahead and um, rewind, pause, uh, review any of these uh, concepts as often as you like. So that's the purpose of uh, having this in video form. Let's go ahead and look at number one here. We're going to solve the equation. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to subtract 14 from both sides. So we'll show that step here. And that'll leave us with a 2x equals, we've got negative 34 minus 14. That should be negative uh, 48. And then we'll go ahead and divide both sides by 2. And the result here will be x is equal to negative 24. We can plug that in to check, make sure that negative 2 times, or 2 times negative 24 plus 14 equals negative 34. And it does, so we're good. Okay, in question number two here, we're asked to do a couple of things. We're asked to uh, find the value of A and also to find the value of the marked angles. So we want to know the measure of each of these angles here. So let's go ahead and find the value of A. If we understand vertical angles, we should know that this angle, that's uh, 5A plus 11, it should be congruent to or equal to this angle, 6A uh, minus 8. So let's go ahead and set up that equation, 6A minus 8 has to equal 5a plus 11. And to solve here, we're just going to subtract um, 5a from both sides. Let's get all the a's on one side as fast as we can here. And the result there is a, 6a minus 5a is a minus, I thought I switched back over here, a minus 8 is equal to, this zeroes out, 11. Let's go ahead and then add 8 to both sides. I'm doing the inverse operation of the subtraction here, the subtracting 8, the inverse would be adding 8. So we'll add 8 to both sides. And the result here is A equals 19. So we've done part A, we found out that A is 19. Now let's go ahead and do part B. We'll find the value of the marked angles. We'll do that in green. It says the first one is 5a plus 11. Well, if we put 19 in for a, we get 5 times 19 and then plus 11. See, 5 times 19 should be 95 and then plus 11 and that should be 106. So it looks like our marked angles are 106 degrees. Let's double check that by also plugging 19 in for A on the other angle. 6 times A, or 19, minus 8. Let's see, 6 times 19, 6 times 10 is 60, 6 times 9 is 54. If I add 60 and 54, I should get 114 minus 8, which does equal 106. So my part B is 106, and notice that we also have a built-in check for uh, the A equals 19 because both these angles did come out to be the same thing, 106. All right, number three, we're going to solve the proportion. We have 9 over 2 equals negative 10 over x. Anytime we have a proportion, we can solve by cross-multiplying. So let's go ahead and cross-multiply. One cross product is the 9 times the x. We'll take 9 times x and get 9x equals. The other cross product is the 2 times negative 10. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. And when we divide both sides by 9, let's go ahead and show that step. Divide both sides by 9 to get the 9s to reduce out here. We get the fraction 20 ninths, or negative 20 ninths in this case. 20 and 9 don't share any common factors, so there's nothing to reduce. We'll stop right here. x equals negative 20 ninths. Number 4, we have another proportion. x minus 9 over 13 equals 3 over 2. I'm going to solve this one the same way. Even though we have a binomial in the fraction here, this, the process is still the same. We have a fraction equals a fraction or a proportion, which means we can just cross multiply to solve. So let's take the 2 
times the x minus 9 equals, that's this first cross product here, equals the 3 times the 13, that's the other cross product. So 3 times 13 is 39. Let's go ahead and distribute the 2 on the left, so 2x minus 18. All we did there was we took the 2 times everything inside the parentheses, so 2 times x is 2x, and also 2 times the negative 9 is negative 18. That still equals this 39. All right, now we just have a, a linear equation to solve here, so let's go ahead and add. It's the inverse of subtract is to add 18 to both sides. The result there gives us 2x equals, what, 57, 39 plus 18. And we divide by 2, we get x equals 57 halves. 57 is an odd number, so 2 won't go into it evenly, so we'll just, we can leave our fraction in this form if we choose. x equals 57 halves. And we're done. Number five says a van travels 240 miles on 12 gallons of gas. It says write and solve a function to find how many gallons, so this is an unknown, the van needs to travel 460 miles. So let's uh, just set up a proportion here. We know that 240 miles takes 12 gallons of gas. So I've got miles over gallons here equals 460 miles over how many gallons? We don't know. Let's just call that x. We could go ahead and cross multiply here, but I'd rather reduce first. So let's reduce. 12 goes into itself one time, and it goes into 240 20 times. So I've reduced the 240 over 1, uh, excuse me, the 240 over 12 to 20 over 1. Now let's cross multiply. So 20 times x is one cross product, is 20x, is equal to 1 times 460 is 460. Come on. And then we'll go ahead and divide. Divide by 20. Divide by 20. On the left, the 20s reduce out, and we get x equals what is this equal? 23. So the question is how many gallons? We just found that it takes 23 gallons. And we're done. When the question uses units like miles and gallons and asks for how many gallons, make sure you give units in your answer. Okay, number eight gives us uh, similar triangles. So if we have similar triangles, we have congruent angles, and we have sides that are in proportion. So let's go sit ahead and see what we can do here. It says to find the value of x, so we need to find the value of this x down here. And uh, let's set up a proportion. Let's see, I can go uh, top left over top left. So 21 over, and that's a 21, over 33 is equal to, let's try that again. Still getting used to this new pen. Let's try that again. 21, 21 over 33, that's top left over top left, is equal to bottom over bottom, so x over 17. Let's see, I can reduce the 21 and 33, both have a common factor of 3, so 3 goes into 33 11 times, 3 goes into 21 7 times. Now let's go ahead and cross multiply to solve our proportion. One cross product is the 11 times x. I always like to do the variable cross product first so it ends up on the left. 11 times x equals 7 times 17. Let's see, 7 times 10 is 70 and 7 times uh, 7 is 49. So what is that, 119? If we divide both sides by 11, we're going to get 119 elevenths.
Okay, this problem says to round to the nearest tenth if necessary. So we're going to have to take 119 elevenths and divide it out. 119 divided by 11 is uh, approximately 10.8. So our final answer here is going to be 10.8 and our units is centimeters. That's it. Okay, number seven says the length of a rectangle is six centimeters, centimeters less than twice its width. So we have a length six less than twice the width. The perimeter is 72. What are the dimensions of the rectangle? Hmm, let's just uh, start with a picture. We've got a rectangle. So let's just make a sketch here. It says in the beginning that the length is six less than twice the width. We don't know how long the width is, so let's go ahead and put an X there. And it says that the length is six less than twice. So let's start with twice the width and then do six less. And it says the perimeter, that's the distance around, is equal to 72. Let's see if I can clean that up without making a mess here. equal to 72. So that means if I add up all the sides, I'll get 72. If I add up just half the sides, one length and one width, instead of two lengths and two widths, I should get half of 72. So let's do that. Let's take the 2x minus 6 and add the x. So this is one length and one width. Instead of two lengths and two widths, it should equal half the 72, or 36. Let's see, on the left side here we have some like terms. I have 2x, oops, wrong pen. I have 2x and I have x. I should be able to add those up. 2x plus x is 3x. And I still have this minus 6. I still have this minus 6. And that equals still 36. Now we need to add that 6 to both sides. Doing the inverse operation here, it says subtraction in my problem, so I'm going to do the inverse of that, which is add. I'm going to add 6 to both sides to keep my equation balanced. 3x equals 36 plus 6 is 42. And then the inverse of the multiplication I see here is to divide. This says 3 times x, I'll divide by 3. I'm going to undo that. And the result here is x is equal to 42 divided by 3 is 14. So x is 14, that's my width. And this is in centimeters. And it says that my length is equal to twice that and then minus 6. So if I take 2 times 14, I get 28. If I subtract 6 from that, I get 22. So my width is 14 centimeters and my length is 22. We can check this. If I add these together, I get 36. If I double that, I get my whole perimeter is 72. Number eight says, Carlos and Maria drove a total of 292 miles in 58 5.8 hours. Carlos drove the first part of the trip and averaged 49 miles per hour. Maria drove the remainder of the trip and averaged 52 miles per hour. Let's get some of this highlighted. For approximately how many hours did Maria drive? Round her answer to the nearest tenth again, if necessary. So how many hours did Maria drive? Let's see. 292 miles in 5.8 hours. 49 miles per hour. This looks like a classic rate times time equals distance problem. Rate times time equals distance. Anytime I run into these, I like to organize my information in a, in a grid here, a table. So rate times time equals distance. We know the total distance was 292 miles. We'll put that down at the bottom to total that up. We know the total time was 5.8 hours. I'll put that here. 
it says Carlos drove the first trip and averaged 49 miles per hour. So let's put Carlos here and Maria here. He went 49 miles per hour. And Maria drove the remainder of the trip at 52 miles per hour. For approximately how many hours did Maria drive? Well, we don't know how many hours Maria drove, but let's put an X there because that's what we're trying to find. That way when we find X, we're done with the problem. So how long did Carlos drive? Well, he drove uh, the rest of the time. Together, it took 5.8 hours. Maria drove X of those hours. So if we take the total 5.8 and we subtract out Maria's X hours, we'll have what's left for Carlos. Rate times timing always equals distance. So if we multiply uh, Maria's rate times her time, we get 52x. If we multiply Carlos's rate 49 times her the 5.8 minus x, we get his total distance. Carlos's distance plus Maria's distance should equal the total distance that they drove. So Carlos's distance plus Maria's distance should equal the total distance they drove. Let's go ahead and set that equation up. 49 times 5.8 minus x. That's Carlos's distance plus Maria's distance, 52x. Has to equal the total distance they drove together, 292 miles. Let's see, we got to figure out 49 times 5.8 because we need to do the distribution there. So I'll punch that in, 49 times 5.8, I'm told that's 284.2. Uh, so we have 284.2 minus 49x. We're just distributing the 49 here. 49 times 5.8, 284.2. 49 times negative x is negative 49, plus the 52x that's still here is equal to 292. Let's go ahead and uh, combine like terms here, I guess, first. So we'll keep the 284.2. We're going to combine negative 49x and positive 52x. That's going to leave me a 3x. It's the same as 52x minus 49x. It's equal to 292. Now let's subtract this positive, even though it's not here, this is a positive, there's not a plus sign here, but this is a positive 284.2, so we need to do the opposite of a positive would be to subtract, opposite of adding would be to subtract, 284.2 from both sides. So we'll take our 292 and we'll subtract 284.2 and the result is 7.8. So 3x is equal to 7.8. And now we just need to divide both sides by 3. x is equal to, oops, x is equal to 7.8 divided by 3 is 2.6. So Maria drove for 2.6 hours. Carlos drove for the rest. Didn't ask how long Carlos drove, just ask how long Maria drove. She drove approximately 2.6 hours. Okay, our last two problems uh, deal with the Pythagorean theorem. And number nine looks pretty straightforward. It just says find the missing side if necessary round to the nearest tenth. Recall the Pythagorean theorem is about uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is always the hypotenuse of a right triangle and a and b are the two legs of a right triangle. So if we apply that here, we can take 7 squared plus 18 squared has to equal that hypotenuse c squared. 7 squared is 49 plus 18 squared is 324 
and that has to equal c squared. 49 plus 324 is 373. Now I don't want to know c squared, I want to know c. So I have to undo, just like I've been to undoing uh, addition with subtraction and subtraction with addition and multiplication with division, I have to undo squaring. The way to undo that is with square rooting. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now normally I'd put a plus and a minus here, but I know that C has to be positive, so I'm not going to worry about the negative. But just to uh, foreshadow that, we'll stick that in there. And actually, it's not foreshadowing. It's something we should be doing all along. And then uh, solve for C. So the square root of something squared is just the something, in this case C, and we need the square root of 373. That is about 19.3, and they asked us to round to the nearest tenth. So it's about 19.3. So about, no longer equal. And we don't have units here, so we can't say centimeters or inches or whatever the units would be. Okay, our last problem on this exam talks about a scuba diver has a taut rope, a tight rope. It, it's uh, There's no slack in it. Connecting the dive boat to an anchor on the ocean floor. The rope is 105 feet long and the water is 70 feet deep. To the nearest tenth of a foot this rounding thing again. How far is the anchor from a point directly below the boat? All right, so let's use um, this dot right here for the boat. The anchor is directly below. So let's put a dot down here for the anchor that's directly below. And we say there's a taut rope that's holding that um, boat in place. So let's go ahead and use a, a line here to draw our taut rope. It's holding that line in place. I guess we're going to assume a fairly level uh, floor here and connect these all up. So that generates a right triangle. So a screwdriver diver has a taut rope connecting the dive boat to, the, to an anchor on the ocean floor. Oh, actually the anchor is out here, isn't it? The anchor is out here. We don't have the anchor under the boat. It's anchored out here. Uh, this is 105 feet. The water is 70 feet deep. So the boat's on top of the water. The floor of the, of the ocean is below the boat right here. It's still 70 feet all the way down. How far is the anchor from a point directly from the boat? That would be this distance right here. So again, we have a nice right triangle. We can go ahead and we have two known sides. We just need to find the one side here. We can go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem again. So we have x squared plus the other leg is 70 in this case, 70 squared. And that should equal 105 squared. Let's see, x squared will stay the same. If we square uh, 70, we're going to get um, 4,900. 7 times 7 is 49. 70 times 70 is 4,900. Equals 105 squared. That's uh, 11,025. All right. We've got a plus 4,900 here we need to get rid of, so let's subtract that. So when we subtract 4,900 from both sides, we get x squared isolated here equals 6,125. And again, I have x squared. I don't want x squared. I want x. So I'm going to square root this to get rid of the squaring. That will give me a positive or negative root 6,125. But again, I know x is a distance. It has to be positive. It can't be negative. So forget about the negative and say that x equals, I'm going to take the square root of that, and the result is approximately 78.3 if we round to the nearest tenth. So 78.3 feet is how far 
the anchor is from directly under the boat.